Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Ahmed's Math 20 screencasts. Today's screencast will cover all of chapter 4 uh, which talks about trigonometry of right triangles. Um, so 4.1 here is talk, uh, deals with solving for angles, lengths, and distances. Uh, so in this chapter we're going to be working with trigonometric ratios to solve problems. Um, these trigonometric ratios uh, are sine, uh, or abbreviated as SIN, so sin. Uh, cosine, abbreviated as COS, so cos, and tangent, abbreviated as TAN, um, so tan. Uh, and these are actually based on the lengths of the sides of a right uh, angle triangle. So um, please understand that you can only use these ratios when you're actually dealing with a right angle triangle. If it's not a right angle triangle, then this does not work at all. Um, so uh, the sides are labeled as opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Uh, now, the opposite side, so OPP, is actually opposite the angle theta. And this is what we say, it's called theta. Um, and so that's why this is called the opposite side to that. Uh, this is the adjacent side, that means it's a side that's in direct contact with this angle. Uh, and then this is the hypotenuse, and you'll always find that the hypotenuse is actually across from the uh, right angle. Okay, so uh, opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Uh, the ratios are defined as follows. So sine of theta uh, is equal to the opposite sine divided by the hypotenuse. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So for example, if I had uh, an angle of 45 here, then 45 sine, that's giving me 0 0.707106. That means that if this opposite side was 0 0.707 in length, then the hypotenuse would be 1. Uh, we could also try 30. So if this angle right here was 30, so sine of 30 is 0 0.5. And what that means is that your opposite side, if this angle is 30, then the opposite side would be exactly half the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, um, And that's how these ratios work. So with cosine, uh, it's actually the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And with, with tangent, it's actually the opposite divided by the adjacent, okay? Um, so these are the ratios. Uh, you could, you've could, you probably already heard of this, uh, ab these abbreviations, SOCATOA. You've probably already heard of that. And uh, SOCATOA is actually spelled S-O-H, C-A-H, and T-O-A. And that's actually SO, S-O-H, CA, C-A-H, TOA. T O A. So it's actually just a quick way of memorizing um, the ratios. Okay, so SOCA TOA. So let's go ahead and try example one. Uh, solve the triangles. And when you're trying to solve this triangle, when it says solve the triangles, it means to pretty much find out what is missing here. Uh, so we are missing the hypotenuse, uh, we are missing um, angle A and angle B. Okay, uh, now, now please, uh, please note that. Uh, that A is actually, like in your workbook, they didn't actually do it properly. Um, so the, the values that you get down here for angle A and angle B are actually completely off. So uh, here's how you do it. Uh, we can start off by figuring out what the hypotenuse is. Um, this is actually quite simple. All you've got to do is just use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so the Pythagorean theorem says that this side squared plus this side squared equals this side squared. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go 7.5 uh, to the power of 2 <coughs> plus 15.3 uh, to the power of 2. Okay, so I get, I'm getting an overall value of 290.34, and then the square root of that will give me my value for the hypotenuse right here, which is 17.04. Uh, 039. I'm going to go ahead and actually write that down on a piece of paper to keep that in mind. So 17.039366 uh, is the uh, length of the hypotenuse that I just figured out using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. And uh, let's check. Yeah, so they actually got a, a bizarre value here. Unless I did it wrong. Pretty sure I didn't do it wrong. Did I square? Uh... Okay, this is the thing with using these weird calculators. So I'm going to go ahead and try this again. Uh, so 7.5 square plus 
squared, okay, so 56.25, uh, plus 15.3 squared. So I'm getting a total of 290.34, and then the square root of that does give me 17.0393. Uh, so uh, all your workbook seems to seems to have written it out right. It looks like when they go to get the square root of that, they just get a completely different value. Um, yeah, because 23.2 to the power of 2 is 538. So yeah, just again, just ignore your workbook uh, for this question. They just they completely messed up that question. But otherwise, um, we just found out that the hypotenuse here was 17.039366. Um, now, time to find this angle right here, and, that's ang and that angle is angle A, and uh, the information that we have uh, to figure out angle A, we've got the opposite side to the angle, and we've got the adjacent side to the angle. So as soon as we're, we've got opposite and adjacent, you've got to go back up to your ratios, and then, you're, and then you've got to figure out which one of these ratios are we using. Are we using sine, cosine, or tangent? Um, so like I said, we've got the opposite side and we've got the uh, adjacent side. So looking at these, oh hey, there you go, opposite divided by adjacent, that's actually our tangent ratio. So tangent of this unknown angle would give us a ratio of 7.5 divided by 15.3. Now the way you put that in your calculator, that's where you start using the second function tan and you get that little tan negative one. That's where you gotta use those. Um, so first of all, uh, opposite divided by adjacent. So 7.5 divided by 15.3 divided by 15.3. Okay, so I got 0 0.490196. That's the ratio, okay? So that means that this right here, the opposite over adjacent, is 0 0.490196 okay so the way you go about going backwards and actually finding out this angle right here is by using the second function tan okay so instead of using just tan theta equals offset divided by adjacent um, now it's time to actually use second function tan and then you would put input this value right here okay so I've got that value and then I'm gonna go second Tan, and as you can see, it, or maybe you can't, uh, my button changed to tan negative one, and there you go. Uh, my angle is twenty six point one one three nine. Okay, so that's the angle that I just got over here uh, for angle A, twenty six point one one three nine. Okay, um, now time to get angle B. Uh, and angle B, in order to figure that out, we've got the opposite side and we've got the adjacent side. So again, we we are using the tangent ratio. So the first thing you got, you got to do is you got to take this 15.3 and then divide it by 7.5. Okay, so that ratio is 2.04. Uh, except now that you know that it's tangent of this angle B is equal to 2.04, you've now got to work backwards and figure out what this angle is, and that's where you've got to use t uh, second function tan. So on your calculator, you're pushing second function tan of 2.04, and then you get an angle of uh, 63.886 degrees. Okay, so that would be the angle uh, B here. Okay, um, question B, you go about you go about this the same way uh, here. You, here you've got the hypotenuse, you've got one side, so uh, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what this side is right here. Uh, now, when you go to figure out angle S, you do want to use uh, the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. Uh, so that adjacent side and the hypotenuse, you've got to go up here on, in your ratios and figure out which one are you going to be using. So I did say we have the adjacent side uh, and the hypotenuse. So you're looking here, and oh hey, there you go, adjacent side and hypotenuse. So that's the cosine ratio that you're using, okay? Um, and then for to figure out angle T, uh, you've got the opposite side and the hypotenuse, and opposite side and hypotenuse, that's actually um, this uh, sine ratio that you're using, okay? So 
uh, you really just have to kind of, you know, if, if, if you're trying to figure out this angle right here, um, make sure that you're figuring out what are the sides that you do have. Uh, we've got the opposite side to that angle, and we've got the hypotenuse, okay? So that's, I mean, uh, opposite and hypotenuse, and then you just go back up here, uh, and then you decide which one of these ratios you're, you're using. So that's really the hard part, uh, is figuring out, it's not really a hard part. I mean, it's the important part is figuring out what, which one of these ratios you are going to be using. Okay. Okay. So, uh, at this point, you can pause the video and attempt the build your skills questions on page two hundred of your workbook. Okay. So, moving on to example two, uh, and so trigonometric ratios in complex situations. Um, so, uh, here it's telling you solve for QS, ST, and RT, and what that means is solve for QS, so really what they're saying is figure out the length of from Q to S, ST is figure out the length from S to T, and RT is figure out the length from R to T, okay? Uh, now you're provided with this angle right here and with this side right here, um, and actually Looking at that, we can we can actually see that uh, using uh, the tangent ratio, we're going to be able to figure out what QS is, uh, and that's because if you have the angle, and then you've got the side that's opposite the angle, and you're trying to figure out what QS is, well, that side right here is actually the side that's adjacent. Okay, so at this point here, you've got the tangent of 26 is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, and that's what they write right here. So the tangent of 26 is equal to your opposite side divided by your adjacent side. Um, now, at this point, you do want to be using uh, manipulating formulas. Uh, so being able to manipulate this formula right here would involve uh, understanding that to get rid of dividing by QS, okay? So uh, because this is 12.5 divided by adjacent side, so if you want to div uh, get rid of dividing by QS, you've got to multiply both sides by QS, and that's what they do over here. Uh, now that you've done that, you do want to isolate QS uh, so that it's on one side of the equation by itself. Uh, and the way you do that is you do the opposite operation of multiplying by tangent of 26. The opposite operation of that is dividing by tangent of 26. Uh, so you would multiply both sides, sorry, you would divide both sides by the tangent of 26, as that is the opposite operation of uh, multiplying by tangent 26. So you end up with this little uh, uh, equation right here, uh, and the way you would do that is uh, you would go out figuring out what 20, the tangent of 26 is. So uh, my calculator here does require me to put in the value first, so 26, and then push the tangent button to get that, and then uh, so that's 0 0.4877326, and I'm going to write that value down because I'm now going to divide 12.5 by that value. So 12.5 divided by 0 0.4877326, and that gives me a value of 25.6 centimeters uh, for length QS. Now the second question is asking us for length st. This is length st right here. Uh, and actually, if you look at this closely, you can see that we actually do have a right angle triangle being made, uh, formed right here, okay? Where the length qs, which we just figured out as 25.6, would actually now be the hypotenuse, okay? So you've now, you've now got an angle, uh, sorry, you've now got a triangle where the angle is still 26, except now this side is now the hypotenuse, uh, and that one was 25.6, and then now we can figure out this side right here. Now, if we have the hypotenuse, and we're trying to figure out the side that's adjacent to the angle 26, so adjacent and hypotenuse, that's the cosine ratio that you've got to be using. So scrolling back up to your ratios, We've got the adjacent side, uh, or we're trying to figure out the adjacent side. We've got the hypotenuse, we've got the angle, so you're using the cosine ratio, okay? Scrolling back down. So that means that cosine of 26 
is equal to the adjacent side, which is ST, divided by 25.6, which was your hypotenuse. Okay, and that's what they do right here. So cosine of 26 is equal to adjacent side, which is unknown, divided by 25.6. Now, the way you'd want to isolate for this unknown or the adjacent side, um, because that adjacent side is divided by 25.6, the way you get rid of dividing by 25.6 is by doing the opposite operation. The opposite operation of dividing by 25.6 is multiplying by 25.6. Uh, if you multiply this side by 25.6, then you make sure that you multiply the other side of the equation by 25.6 as well. So, uh, 26, also I'm going to go, I'm going to do my cosine 26 first, and again my calculator requires me to put in the value first, and then cosine. So this is cosine of 26, 0 0.89879, and then that times 25.6 to get a value for the adjacent side of 23.00 cent or 01 centimeters okay so that adjacent side right here at the side st is 23 centimeters now finally the question is asking you to give me a to give a value for side rt uh, rt is this side right here okay uh, we've got the angle here and we actually just figured out that from S to T is actually, is actually 23 centimeters. Uh, and then that's looking like that is the hypotenuse for angle STR. Okay? So if we had a triangle, sorry, did I say angle? I meant triangle. Um, uh, here we've got a triangle STR right here. Okay? Where we do have uh, the value of the angle. Uh, and we also do have the value of the hypotenuse uh, that was length st which we just calculated earlier is 23 centimeters okay uh, so we can figure out this opposite side right here rt is opposite the angle and this is the hypotenuse st which was 23 centimeters so we are going to be using opposite and hypotenuse and that's the sine ratio okay so sine of 26 is equal to this opposite side divided by 23 and that's what they do. The sine ratio is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. This is the opposite side that we're trying to figure out divided by the hypotenuse, which is 23. So pulling out my calculator, I'm going to figure out what sine of 26 is first. Okay, so here it is. And then now to isolate for the adjacent side, which is RT, uh, RT is divided by 23. Well, you do the opposite of dividing by 23. You multiply by 23 to isolate that. So you also multiply the other side by 23 as well. So you get a value of about 10.1 centimeters for that adjacent side. Uh, at this point, you can pause the video and try out the Build Your Skills questions on page 202 of your workbook. Okay, so now moving on to example three. Uh, a piece of plywood is cut into the shape shown. Uh, calculate the dimensions of the plywood. Uh, so we're being told that this side here is equal to that side, which is six feet. Uh, and so really what you have to do is you've got to uh, cut the shape down into two uh, shapes as they did, as they did over here. Um, and the reason for doing that is because now you can actually figure out what the length of this side is right here. And you can figure out the length of uh, this side here here as well okay so uh, by cutting that into uh, you've now got a square so six feet six feet and therefore that here is six feet and then that's six feet um, and you've now got this right angle triangle right here uh, and then the way you solve that is simply just figure figuring out um, uh, length of y and the length of x so uh, let's figure out the length of y first so I've got the angle, I've got the opposite side, and y is the adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent, that's my tangent ratio. So that's actually tan tangent of 68 is equal to 6 divided by y. Okay, so here we go. So tangent of 68 is equal to 6 divided by y. Uh, I do have to uh, isolate for y. So because this is divided by y, I've got to get rid of dividing by y, and I've got to bring it up into the numerator. The way you do that is by multiplying both sides by y, as they did here. And then now, all that's left to do is to get rid of tangent of 68, uh, because this is y times tangent of 68. The way you get rid of tangent 68 is by dividing by tangent of 68. 
So you divide both sides by tangent of 68, and this is your uh, manipulated formula or equation. So going ahead and just figuring out what the tangent of 68 is, there it is, and then 6 divided by that gives you 2.4 feet, okay? So, or 2.4, 2.424. So that, that right here, this side right here is 2.424 feet. So I'm actually going to write that down, 2.424 feet. Uh, now, time to figure out what the length x is. Um, and to do that, uh, you do have the angle down here. You've got the opposite side, and angle x is actually the hypotenuse because it's across from your uh, right angle. So opposite and hypotenuse, that's the sine ratio that you've got to be using, okay? So that sine of 68 is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. Therefore, sine of 68 is equal to 6 feet divided by x. And that's what they do over here. Uh, they do the same steps as we did previously to isolate for x. So you multiply both sides by x, and then you divide by sine of 68. Okay, so you, you get this. Uh, and then just inputting that into our calculator, here's sine of 68 and then 6 divided by that gives us 6.4712 feet. 6.4712 feet. Okay, so now we do have everything we need uh, to be able to figure out the total dimension. Well, we figured out the dimensions, calculate the dimensions of the plywood. Okay, so it wasn't asking us for a perimeter. Uh, it was just asking us for, well, this is 6 feet, this is 6 feet. This length right here was what we just figured out as being x, uh, which was 6.4712 feet. And then this side right here would actually be the 6 feet from C to E, that's 6 feet, plus our y value, which was 2.424, therefore that's 8.424 feet, okay? So lengths A and B, and B and C are each 6 feet, Length AD, which was the hypotenuse here, which was our value for x, was roughly 6.5 feet, and uh, length D to C was roughly 8.4 feet. Okay. Uh, at this point, you can pause the video and attempt the Build Your Skills questions on page 205 of your workbook. Okay. Uh, moving on to example four, uh, it's asking us, Justin wants to line the perimeter of his patio with a paving stone border. Uh, what is the perimeter of his patio? So uh, this is really kind of just uh, use, using logic and, and reasoning. You can figure out each one of these sides. Um, I'm going to talk you guys through it, through this. Uh, I'm not going to actually do it, otherwise that's going to take too long. Uh, you can take a look at the solution uh, in your workbook, though, um, to see how to go about doing that. Um, but otherwise... What you could do is, because of the fact that this is 15 meters, therefore that means that this right here, from this point to this point, is 15 meters. So if you've got this side right here, you've got a, a length, and you've got this angle, then you can figure out what this length right here is. And you can figure out the hypotenuse of that. So there you go, that's how you figure out two of these uh, uh, sides. Uh, you've got this length is 7, uh, this length is 10.5, uh, and then now you've got to figure out what this length is right here. And the way you figure that length is by just uh, drawing a line from this point right here all the way over here. So you now have a right angle triangle, okay? Uh, this angle right here, just, sorry, this angle right here would be actually 40 degrees. Uh, the reason being that uh, a straight line has an, is, a, is an angle of 180 degrees. And if this is 140 degrees, then that means that this down here is just 40 degrees. So you've got this length as being four, or this angle is being 40 degrees. Um, you've got this length from here to here as being 10.5, and from here to here as being 20. So that means that this total length right here should be 20. Uh, and if this side right here is 10.5, then that means that this side right here is 9.5. Okay, so you've got the length of this side 9.5. You've got this angle right here. Uh, you can figure out what this hypotenuse is and what this opposite side is as well. Okay. Uh, now to figure out the total length of this side here, you're taking that little opposite side that you just figured out earlier, uh, and you're adding 7 meters to that, as well as 15 meters to that. So that's 15 meters, plus 7 meters, plus whatever you figured out that side to be. Uh, and now you're, we're back to 20 meters here. 
uh, and that is uh, that's actually pretty much it. There you go. That, so just that, all that's left now is that once you figured out what this side is, what that side is, uh, what this side here is, and what that total side is here, then you just add all these uh, known values together and just figure out the perimeter of this uh, this border. Okay. So really, it's just kind of using logic and common sense and um, you know your mathematical prowess to figure out you know to make deductions about sides and figure out what each side is going to be in terms of length. Okay, and you can see the detailed answer for this in your workbook. Uh, at this point, you can pause page 209. Sorry, you can pause the video and attempt the questions on page uh, 209 of your workbook. Uh, you've also got the practice your new skills questions as well on page 210. So at this point, you can pause the video and attempt all of those questions. Now moving on to chapter 4.2, uh, so solving complex problems in the real world. It tells you here sometimes when working with a problem you've got to break the situation down to two or more triangles and work in steps to solve it. So you may need to use values from one triangle to solve another right triangle and those triangles would share a common edge. Okay, So here it's asking you solve for x and y in the following diagram. Uh, so solving for x is pretty straightforward because here you've got this angle right here, you've got the adjacent side to that, and then therefore now your x is your hypotenuse. Uh, so you are, you are using the cosine, uh, the cosine ratio. So cosine of 40 is equal to 6.4 divided by x. Okay, so there you go. Cosine of 40 is equal to 6.4 divided by x. You manipulate 4x, so you multiply both sides by x. So now your x is up here. Okay, so there's your x. Uh, and then multiplying that side by x gets rid of that x. So now we've got x times cosine of 40 is equal to 6.4. Uh, and now uh, you just isolate for x by dividing both sides by cosine of 40. So if you divide that side by cosine of 40 uh, and this side by cosine of 40, uh, you get this equation right here. Okay? So 6.4 divided by cosine of 40. So doing that, 40 and then cos, so you get, I get this value, 0 0.766, and then 6.4 divided by that. Okay, and that gives me 8.3546, which is 8.4 centimeters. Okay, um, now you will have to use that length right here, 8.3546. Uh, you're going to have to use that length to figure out what y is. Uh, I do recommend that you don't uh, do as your workbook did. Your workbook went and used your rounded value of 8.4. Um, I don't recommend doing that. You should be using the exact value that you got. Um, that exact value was 8.3546. Okay, I'm actually going to write that down because I'll use it. Okay, so you you should be using that exact value right here as opposed to using a rounded value because if you use a rounded value, then what ends up happening is that you will, uh, that, that's like a, by rounding you did kind of make a slight error, it's not, rounding is not an error, but it's just that by rounding uh, your value is no longer as, as exact as it used to be, uh, and then therefore you rounded that up to 8.4, and that actually can uh, cause you to have a value later on that is slightly off for y, okay? Um, but other, otherwise, Here's your angle, you've got the opposite side, and you want to figure out what the adjacent side is. So you are using the tangent ratio, that means tangent of 68 is equal to your opposite side, which is 8.3546 feet, uh, divided by the adjacent side, which is y, uh, and that's actually what they do down here. There you go, and then they isolate for y, uh, where you get, that's 8.35 uh, divided by tangent of 68. So I'm going to use my exact value which is this right here, uh, and I'm going to divide that by tangent of 68. So uh, I'm actually going to figure out what tangent of 68 is first, so 68 tan. Uh, and then I'm going to go 8.3546 divided by that to get a value of 3.375 centimeters, okay? Uh, which, yeah, does round up to 3.4 centimeters, but it's always recommended that you do use the exact values. Uh, so there you go. That was using 
uh, figure out side x of this triangle, and then using that side x to figure out side y of another triangle. Okay. At this point, you, po you can pause the video and attempt the Build Your Skills questions on page 215 of your workbook. Now, example two here is talking to you about a flagpole that's supported by two wires, uh, each attached to a peg in the ground that's four meters from the base of the flagpole. Uh, the guy wires have angles of elevations of 35 and 45. Okay. So how much higher up the flagpole uh, is the top guy wire attached? Um, so really you're going to have to figure out the individual heights of these and then subtract them uh, from one another to figure out this difference right here. Okay, So you've got this side right here, um, which is length y. Uh, that length y is when you're, dealing, when you're talking about the wire that's at a 45 degree angle. And then you've got uh, this length right here, which is uh, length x. And that one is when you're at an angle of 35 degrees. So once you figure out these sides, so y and x, uh, you would subtract the two, so y minus x, to figure out what, how much higher the, um, the second wire is. Uh, so they are, they, here they do start off with uh, your angle of 35. So you've got angle 35, you want to figure out the opposite side, you've got the adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent, that means you're going to be using your tangent ratio. So tangent of 35 is equal to x divided by 4, and that's what they do here. So let's do that. Uh, and then you manipulate it to just isolate for x. So it's x divided by 4, so you get rid of dividing by 4 by multiplying both sides by 4. So this is actually 4 times tangent of 35. So I'm going to figure out what tangent of 35 is first, and then I'm going to multiply that by 4. So I got it to be 2.8 meters. So x is 2.8 meters. Uh, let's do the same thing to figure out what y is. Uh, so tangent of 45 is equal to y, opposite side, y, divided by 4. So here you go. That means 4 times tangent of 45 should give us y. So let's figure out what tangent of 45 is first. It's 1, and then 1 times 4 is simply 4. So if y is 4 meters high and x is 2.8 meters high, then the difference between these two is 1.2 meters uh, of height. So that's the difference between the two. So that means the top wire is attached to 1.2 meters higher uh, than the lower wire. Now, B, uh, B is asking how long is each wire. Uh, so here it's just simply using um, this angle, uh, your adjacent side, and to figure out what uh, length A would be here. So you are going to be using the cosine ratio, because cosine of 35, or cosine of your angle is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Therefore, cosine of 35 is equal to 4 meters divided by A. Cosine of 35 is equal to 4 meters divided by a. Uh, you manipulate for a, so I mean you isolate for a, so you multiply both sides by a. So you now got a times cos of 35 equals 4. And then now you divide both sides by cosine of 35. Cosine of 35, you now get a is equal to 4 divided by cosine of 35. Uh, so I'm going to figure out what cosine of 35 is first. I'm going to go 4 divided by that to get 4.88 three meters. They rounded that to 4.9. 4 uh, you do the same thing to figure out the length of wire B. Uh, you've got an angle of 45, you've got the adjacent side of 4 meters, and uh, you've got this hypotenuse, which is B. Uh, so that means cosine of 45 is equal to the adjacent side divided by B. So cosine of 45 is equal to 4 meters divided by B. And that's what they do. They isolate for B. 4 over cosine of 45 will give you uh, B. So doing that, so 45 and then cos, and then 4 divided by that answer. Gives me 5.6568, which they rounded to 5.7 meters. Okay, so that's how they approximated the lengths of each wire. At this point, you can pause the video and attempt the questions on page 219 of your workbook. Okay, so moving on to example three, it's telling us that in some situations you will need to work with triangles that are in, at, or at an angle to each other, uh, but share common edges. So here they give you an example where there's a box that's got uh, lengths 10, 12, and 15. And it's asking us what is the length of the longest rod that can be carried in it? Uh, what angle does it make with the bottom? Okay, so um, if you were 
to have a rod span the length of this cube, or sorry, not cube, but this uh, rectangular prism, um, then what needs to happen is that it needs to span uh, across the longest sides, okay? So that means that it needs to be going uh, at the 15 and 12 uh, centimeter sides, okay? So from here to here would be the longest side, okay? So what angle does it make with the bottom and what is the length? Well, if you look at it like this, um, you've actually got this side right here, 12 and 15, uh, and those, uh, and this is right at a right angle right here, and you can use those, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of uh, D, uh, and once you've figured out the length of D, and you have the height, which is 10 centimeters, uh, you can actually figure out that angle right here as well, okay, so you've got the opposite side and the adjacent side, so there you'd be using the, um, the tangent ratio to figure out what that angle is right here. Uh, you can also use the hypotenuse, or sorry, you can also use the Pythagorean theorem uh, to use with this side right here, D, and this 10 centimeters to figure out what the length of that rod would be, okay? So that's what they uh, they do. So here they say find the diagonal D using the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, they found that out to be 19.2. Okay, that looks right. So they figured out that that is 19.2, and if they got uh, D is 19.2, and 10 centimeters on that side, that means that uh, you can use the Pythagorean theorem again to figure out the length of that rod right here, okay? Um, so that's what they do, they use the Pythagorean theorem again, and they figure out that the length of the rod is 21.6 centimeters, uh, and then they're going to be using the tangent ratio here, uh, along with 10 centimeters and uh, the length we had found for D, which was 19.2 centimeters. So the tangent well, second tangent, actually, so let's do that. Uh, opposite side divided by adjacent side, so that's the tangent ratio, except when you're trying to figure out the angle, that's when you're working backwards, okay? So 10 divided by, uh, and we said 19.2. Okay, so here's the tangent ratio, so 10, 10 of theta is equal to this value right here, Except when you're trying to work backwards and figure out what theta is, that's where you've got to use the second function, tan. That's what I'm going to do right here as well. Second function, tan. That gave me 20... I think that was, I think that was the answer. Uh, okay, I'm going to do that again. Uh, so 0 0.520833 repeating. So that was the ratio that I had gotten for that, and then I go second tan. So that gives me an angle of 27.5 degrees. So that means that this angle right here, uh, it is at an angle of 27.5 degrees, and that's the angle that it does make with the bottom of the rectangular prism, okay? So that's just really using, uh, so there you go, there's 27.5 degrees. So again, that's just using one side of a triangle uh, and figuring out that side of one triangle, then using that side and figuring out other information about another part of the triangle, okay? Uh, so this is what this little subtopic has also been all about uh, as well, okay? Uh, at this point, you can pause the video and attempt to debuild your skills questions on page 222 of your workbook. Uh, you'll also notice that um, that is the end of this chapter, so that was pretty much it. The chapter can be summed up as so katoa, uh, where the sine ratio is equal, equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, the cosine ratio is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, and the tangent ratio uh, is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent, okay? So that is the entire uh, chapter, and then using that information, and then using, uh, you know, using common sense and just pure, you know, logic, uh, you can figure out information, uh, like, you can pretty much answer all the questions in this chapter. Uh, and, and sorry, I was looking at this question right here, um, saying the angle of elevation from Sylvie, what is the height of the nest? So you know, if you've got this length right here, and you've got this angle right here, then you could probably figure out what the hypotenuse is of that triangle, because this length right here is the hypotenuse of this triangle. And then once you've figured out that length, that length is actually now the adjacent side of this second triangle. Okay, so uh, once you've got the adjacent side, and you're trying to figure out the opposite side, you're using that angle of 35 degrees, and that's the opposite divided by adjacent, that's the tangent ratio. Okay, so uh, really everything can be summed up as so ka toa, and then just using uh, just using kind of logic to figure out the rest, okay? 
Uh, so yeah, you can pause the video uh, throughout the questions, the practice your skills uh, questions uh, there. Uh, and there should also be a chapter test at the end because that was that was this entire unit summed up. So on page 226, you will find the chapter test as well. Uh, so otherwise, that is uh, that is the end of this entire chapter. Uh, next chapter is chapter 5, which deals with scale representations, and you'll find another screencast on that. Uh, all right, well, thanks a lot for, uh, for everything, and uh, stay tuned for our next chapter.